honestly, we simply want opportunities for our community. I, you know, as an actor, um, I'd like more productions to be here. I'd like to, uh, you know, have increased opportunities. Uh, I work a lot in the United States, actually, um, which I find kind of interesting. I mean, I have my reps in LA, but I, I work much more in the US than I do here. And I'm actually just doing a, a project now, one of the first I've done in a while. And I kind of wonder about that. I wonder about um, uh, the viability, you know, even, even in a town as busy as this, um, for, for work. Um, one thing that strikes me, of course, is, uh, uh, you know, what crews look like, you know, wherever, wherever I go. Um, I, I was working in Mexico for five months last year. And of course, that crew looked exactly like the streets of, you know, Rosarito, like just south of TJ. Um, uh, I was working in Arkansas this past year, and the crew did not look like Arkansas, right? It was a, it was a really diverse crew. So I look at um, our work, our collective work, as a means of, of creating more opportunities. I think home. what we need to do is, first of all, identify the problem. And to identify the problem, we really have to look at uh, how many people live in, and I'm not talking about you know equal proportional numbers. I'm just talking about um, how many people live in Toronto who, are, who identify themselves as visible minorities. And that is more than one in two. Um, if we look at now, um, Canada is one in four. If I look at film, um, and these are the conversations we've had in the past, and I'm not going to embarrass anyone, but I, I, I'll, I'll tell you that if I look at it in any of uh, the film industry crews, uh, if we go into um, into a, a a set, and there has been examples, I'm not going to get into that, but you know, there will be people set looking at, you know, this is a bunch of white people, my film is a black film. Um, so if you, if you, it, once you identify, I think the most important thing is that we got to identify the problem and then go into how to fix it. And until we do that, and until we have that open conversation, I don't think that we're going too far. And, and I'll, I, I wanted to also say that, look, uh, looking at an example, at, Peter Sellers, the party, uh, a white guy playing in Saltation. Uh, 30 years from then, there is another film that comes out just recently, and uh, Saltation mobster played by a white guy, and Tamp, you know, things. So it, it's, it's just, uh, and, I, and I'm not identifying this as a like, singular uh, a problem. I, I think we have to look at it as a whole. Uh, as a whole, and uh, bottom line is, People like to see themselves on the screen, what they look like. Uh, they don't want to see somebody else playing them, you know, who doesn't look like them at all. That's all I, I wanted to say. Thank you. I, if I could just explain that, I don't think, you're right about, sorry, you don't want to embarrass people, but the crew, the dynamics of the crew in Toronto, and, and while it might be embarrassing, it's the truth, and I think you're right, we have to acknowledge it. For NABET specifically, we have about 3,000 people we represent. We've done studies, and we just recently did them, obviously, for after the Me Too movement about women, but before that, we did one for diversity, and, we're, of that 3,000 people, we're 70% male, 30% female. We're predominantly white. When I say predominantly white, I mean 90% or more. Uh, and of that, the women, for example, are in hair, makeup, and wardrobe. And that, I would argue, is probably going to be the norm if we looked at any of the organizations. And you're right, you have to call attention to your actual stats and then work on how to address it by uh, creating equal opportunity. Well, I don't like to talk about this, but I'm going to throw it out to you guys. Um, especially in terms of gender parity, issues in the last couple of years, you know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, quotas and targets. So I'd like to get your opinion about how you guys feel about saying tying, you know, funding and green lighting to um, inclusive, diverse uh, cast, crews, actor, you know, storylines. Like, how do you feel about if there is a mandate, mandate through the funding bodies that will help drive that change. Uh, I'm originally from India, and uh, they have a different challenge, which is you know caste, C A S T E, yeah. uh, rather than color. Um, so w what they did is they brought in a, a quota system for these um, 
uh, you know, people from the lower caste, and they were in bad shape. There's no doubt they were in bad shape. They still are, uh, some of them. They brought in a quota system, uh, I think it was 47, uh, excuse me if I'm wrong, but in 47, they, they got independence from uh, the British. They brought in a quota system. And today, 70 some odd years later, um, the country's at war because the, the people who have, uh, you know, 33 percentile are getting into jobs that are, you know, they, they call it the civil services. So the top jobs they're getting, they're getting 33 percentile and the 95 percentile is not getting that job. So we have to be careful because politicians, uh, they like doing this stuff because, you know, they get some votes. So once something is legislated, I think, uh, it's very hard to take it back. So I guess, you know, giving somebody an incentive is probably a better idea rather than legislating it. Legislations, regulations, you know, they don't work uh, as far as the acceptance um, and toleration. You can't legislate acceptance. You cannot legislate, you know. Uh, so, and I want to actually say something else on this. Um, Canada's multiculturalism policy that was a buzz, buzzword until about 10 years ago um, was actually written by uh, Pierre Trudeau and it was the 70s and that was written on the basis of tolerance so you tolerate a drunk relative uh, you don't really <laughs> tolerate the whole race so uh, what has happened uh, from that and now fast forward to today uh, when you know, the visible minority, visible minorities are actually they outnumbering the Caucasian pop, uh, Caucasian uh, uh, population in Toronto. Let's say uh, it'll be very hard sell to tolerate, you know, fifty four percent of the people. Uh, so it, what I'm saying is that the change also needs to come from the top. It's already set. So that the policy is written from tolerance. Tolerate that guy. Tolerate that guy. Tolerate that guy. Um, so that's what I'm saying. You can now go back and say, no, you, uh, we have to rewrite this policy and now it'll, it'll be on acceptance or, you know, I, it'll be on inclusion. So until that happens, which is going to be a tough sell, as I, say, as I say, legislations always have tendency to stay. You know, they just don't go away. I've noticed just within the union, within sort of the world that I inhabit, uh, where there are quotas, like, you know, when you look at the national, for example, they have a mandated so many women on the executive board. Uh, one, without trying to criticize them, but I think it's a, a just and fair criticism, and so I, I always sort of make it, is it's an afterthought, right? They rush to find women candidates when they, A, don't step up to the plate or aren't there, and I think that's a disservice to the candidate because they're not being trained, they're not given the tools to fill the position. They're sort of an afterthought. And then the quota system sometimes uh, creates animosity for those that may think they're entitled to the position and now aren't, and it makes it feel very zero-sum. And I think that equality for others isn't meaning that you're now being held back. Quite the opposite. They're now on the level playing field that you were in. And yes, you have more competition, but it's, it's not holding others back that have access. And I, I worry about just saying quota system fix it because you're going to put people in positions when they're not trained. Right? Like, you know, it's someone who's hired. I, I, the NABIT office, I'm very proud of how diverse it is. Uh, just from the 15 employees that we have. And we've hired individuals that you know, sometimes might not have had the credentials to be in the spot. But then we provide access to training. Like I'm really proud of the NABIT members uh, who support me on the office budget to say that we should be training our office staff to the highest standard and giving them the opportunities. And then that, you know, the more diverse people we hire, they tend to hire from that same pool of people like them because the you know, nepotism is there. And it's great. It's made us stronger as an organization. But you can't have the quota system without giving, you know, it's, it's a, a Martin Luther King quote, which I think is important, which is it's disingenuous to tell somebody to pull them up by their own bootstraps, but they don't have boots. I butchered his quote, but the concept the same is you can't just say take the spot. You also have to give them and support them to make sure they have the tools to be able to fulfill the role. Because if they don't, a lot of people who are opposed to the quota system will say, see, it's failing because you're just placing people in spots. So you, it's not just enough to mandate it. You also have to support people in their roles. Michael, do you want to add to this? Or? You know, I, uh, I, I'm listening, and it's a really complex um, thorny kind of thing. I, I reject pretty much wholeheartedly uh, the uh, the notion that um, candidates from communities of color are in some way not qualified, right? Um, that they don't have enough training, that they don't have enough experience, that they're being placed in positions that they're not ready for. 
um, when really the, you know, that's just uh, an old, old criticism, right? Um, the fact of the matter is that uh, artists of color, whether they're technical crew or writers or directors, um, have to work 10 times as hard, right, to, to gain their experience. Um, and you know, gain the expertise that make them excellent at their jobs. So when we say, um, you know, like I want to give this job to this guy uh, or this woman, um, you know, because we are we want to be inclusive, that it still bears that sort of taint of like I'm preventing a really qual super qualified guy person from this community from getting a job to give it to this less qualified person, right? Like that is a, that's a racist argument. Um, what's, what's in play here is really um, systemic barriers um, to access. There are incredibly qualified artists, technical people, writers, every category. Um, whether or not they're applying um, through traditional routes, or whether or not they're eking out a living, grinding it out, you know, in some other capacity, um, I'm, I don't know. Uh, but every artist that I've worked with, every, every crew person uh, that I've worked with, um, belongs in that job. Maybe we are talking to the converted, but we all have a role to play. Um, and I think, you know, the unions, the guilds, the funders, the production companies, like everyone has a role to play. And one thing I'd love to just hear from all of you, if you don't mind um, talking a little bit about it, it's just like, for you personally, professionally, on a day-to-day -day basis, what is one thing that you feel you're doing that can help move the dial on this conversation? Uh, so in my actor Toronto treasurer capacity, uh, like I said, I'm the co-spirit of the Ontario Actors Sensitive, so that was the big project to actually get those stats. Uh, personally, as myself, I'm a writer, um, so one of the projects that I'm pushing is, yes, it's a South Asian sitcom, but even then understanding that like, oh, it's not gonna be just South Asians, that's it. So now we also have our African American character, our Hispanic character, our Asian American is our antagonist, uh, and then we also have Caucasian as our studio exec, like these are all the characters. So how do we then go with that? And then we do our read, we then are asking the one of the female actors, like, what do you think? And then, then the, that female actor is like, you know what, I don't think this character has a lot of agency. And then I'm like, what, are you sure? And then, and then I'm like, oh no, you're right. So I think what I have to do uh, personally is that even when I'm producing my work, is to not just produce work to promote my own, like, oh, there should be more brown people. It's now like, no, I have to now lift all those and then get perspectives of all those people. And personally what I did is, uh, we were doing pretty well with our distribution business, our production business. I added on events, because what I realized is that you can't preach um, acceptance. You cannot preach inclusion. You cannot preach, because when you preach, you know, it, it just doesn't work. So what we did is we, we created events which were cross-cultural uh, events. Uh, we, we fe uh, well, I personally felt that that people would like to dance with you rather than listen to you. So um, what we did is we, we did, cross, as I said, cross-cultural events. We did the first uh, Black History Month celebrations uh, just recently. We did uh, the first South Asian History Month uh, celebrations and, and on a large scale, 100,000 people at Union Station. And, you know, we, we had these celebrations going. It's just that, you know, these are actually fun people. They're not the ones that, you know, uh, yell out Allahu Akbar and, and run after you. So whatever media has been portraying. Uh, I know we're going to go to questions, but I do want to add this before we go, is that, because to your point, and also talking about systemic barriers, is I think there's some sort of, uh, this some, you talked about this backlash, this backlash towards if you overcorrect in the wrong way. So I'm going to give you a, a stat here, is that um, there's two ways to look at earnings we had in the census, which was we have mean earnings and median. So mean is taking in consideration everyone's earnings, uh, which can be highly skewed by the few people who are making tons of money, the leads. Whereas the median is kind of like the 50%, the, if you line up everyone from, from smallest to biggest, and that's like the 50% mark. And that one usually is like the lay person. So in the mean earnings, you start to see the massive difference between female and male, and diverse versus non-diverse. When it comes to median, that difference goes what, much smaller. In fact, with our diverse performers, the median earnings are actually higher than non-diverse. 
And I think the reason I personally think is because what's probably happening is that you're casting the leads being male Caucasians. And then after you've done that, then people are like, oh no, we now have to cast everyone around them like this. Which then means that if you are a 22 year old Caucasian woman, you are going to be angry because I can't get that role to get in. So you have, cause so lopsided, it's lopsided at the top and then everyone else then after that is diverse and so Caucasian actors who have no credits are angry because they can't get in. Then the diverse people there are angry for first of all, these people are getting angry at them and they're like, well, we're never gonna get that role up top there. So because it's lopsided all the way through, it ends up getting everyone angry and frustrated, um, which means you have to have that thing at the top. Once you have it at the top, I get the sense that in Kim's convenience, there's never anyone being like this, like, well, they're not gonna hire the Caucasian for that role, or they're not gonna hire, Cause, cause no, because you have the, you, you have it at the top. Uh, and I think that once it happens at the top, that corrects all of the imbalances you have all throughout, because we're in an industry where only a couple of people are making a ton of money, and everyone else, if you're male, you're white, you're non-white, you're female, we're just struggling, and someone, someone says, oh, you have privilege, and it's like, I can't pay the rent, right? And they can't seem to see that. Um, so yeah, that lopsided thing from at the top and how it goes all the way down. And I don't think we talk about that. I don't think we need to correct that or else you're always going to push back when we talk about inclusion.